Welcome to Transformation Church, where we exist to represent God to the lost and found for transformation in Christ. My name is Amberly Bell, and I have the honor and privilege of serving as one of the executive pastors here at TC. We are so honored that you've decided to join us today. Get your phone, your notebook, whatever it is that you take notes with, and get ready for today's message. Somebody, let's give God a shout of praise all over the world. God, we honor you. There's nobody like you. Hallelujah. You know what? This week I heard, um, I heard a lot of people um, talking about how the Holy Spirit has become very active in communicating with them through daily things like getting dressed and, and, and which way to take to work. And, I, I just really believe that there's starting to be a revelation and a revolution of the person of the Holy Spirit. And today, if this is your first time tuning in with us and joining us, we want to say welcome. We're excited about you being here, and we believe that this has been a divine collision in your life. So that whatever's going on right now, it can come in to rest. And I just feel this thing for myself and for everybody else. There is a rest coming to your life. When you allow the Holy Spirit, lift your hands right now. Some of y'all need to rest. I didn't say sleep. You've been sleeping, but you haven't been resting. And I just feel the Holy Spirit said, today I'm going to give people rest. Yeah, if you need rest in the chat right now, I need you to just say, I need some rest. Come on. Some of you have been grinding and hustling. Some of you have been doing the right thing, but there just seems to be this, this anxiousness or this, I got to do more. But right now, there's going to be a rest that comes to you. Come on, hands lifted. Receive the rest of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, right now, we are, we are leaning back into you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just see how my daughter, when she says, Daddy, I want to I wanna sit on your lap. One thing she does is she leans back into me. She knows I'm strong enough to hold her full weight. And I hear God saying to somebody, I'm strong enough to hold your full weight. I know your job. I know your kids. Lay back in me. I know your responsibilities. I feel this thing right now. I know what you want. I know the house is supposed to be built. I know you got this bill, but lean back into me right now. Come on. Somebody needs to spiritually lean back. Somebody is about to get rest for the first time. Father, we rest in you. Father, we rest in you. I know some of y'all want a message right now, but somebody needs a transformation. God, we rest in you. Yeah. We rest in you. We got, we got projects due tomorrow. We got mid, uh, uh, our finals due. We got all these things, but God's saying, rest in me. Rest in me, rest in me, rest in me. We lean back into you with all our responsibilities, with all the things going on in our head. We rest in you, Lord. Yeah, come on, worship team, just feel it right now. This is invading somebody's home right now. It's invading the depression right now. Father, we rest in you. Said great and mighty is our God. Said great and mighty is our God. I hear this. God says, lean back into me because great and mighty is our God. Great and mighty is our God. Come on, let's make him big one time. Can somebody just lift your hands and say, say, great and mighty is our God. Great and mighty is our God. God, you're big enough for everything that we're dealing with right now. Hey! Say, great and mighty is our God. Great and mighty is our God. Father, I thank you for every person that's under the sound of my voice. Father, you've given me a word, but you wanted to give more than a word today. You wanted to give rest today. And so for everybody who's tired and been weary, I thank you for the rest of God right now. I thank you that the rest of this week, 
I hear the Holy Spirit saying some of you are going to sleep and actually rest. Some of you are going to take a Sunday nap and it's going to be like you had a whole vacation. God said, because it's the burdens that have been weighing you down. And he said, today you're going to somebody say rest. Hey, God, I'm resting you. God, I'm resting you. Hey, God, I'm resting you. Said, God, I'm resting you. God, I'm resting you. I'm laying down the burdens that I picked up. Have your way in this place, God. Somebody say, have your way in this place, God. Come on. Somebody say, have your way in this place. Touch yourself. Have your way. We trust you. We believe you. And we thank you. In Jesus' name. So holy. one time say come flood this place that's what happens when you rest your glory huh. you're here Holy Spirit to be just one more time can everybody lift it up no music say Feel the presence of God. Hey, say, come flow this place and feel the atmosphere. Said your glory. We want more of you, Lord. Holy Spirit, do whatever you want to do today. We are inviting you in to do whatever you want to do. I got a plan, but whatever you want to do, God, you are the guest of honor here. Have your way in Jesus' name. Can we give God a shout of praise all over the world? Come on. I dare you to lift your voice and give God right there in your home. Give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Ma, I feel like all those old prophetic conferences I used to go into. Like I feel, like I feel the presence of God is here. Like before I say anything, he's already working. Before I give you a note, he's already moving on your situation. This is just gonna be confirmation. Ah! This is just gonna be confirmation to what the Holy Spirit is already working on the inside of you. Have your way. Said, have your way. Have your way, have your way, have your way. When I was young, my mom and dad used to drive me to all, we used to go to all these prophetic conferences and they would usually be at hotels. And it would always be funny to watch people who were coming to stay at the hotel, go to the elevator to go up to their room, past the conference room where the Holy Spirit was moving. Because you would see these people, some of them coming from the bar, or some of them. And as soon as they would get close, as soon as they would enter, something would start moving on the inside of them because Holy Spirit wasn't confined to the room. And I saw so many times people that were in drunken states, people who were broken and lost, people just on their way, minding their own business, on the way to their room. It was like the Holy Spirit reached out and snatched them. And he started dragging them into the presence. And about an hour into the meeting, you would see a row of people who weren't dressed properly, who didn't know the protocol. 
who didn't have all the right things to say, but the Holy Spirit started drawing. I feel that same anointing today. Somebody's watching, and you in the room, and you didn't even think this was for you, but the Holy Spirit, he's drawing you. He's drawing you. He's drawing you. Ah, I feel that. Somebody say, the Holy Spirit is drawing me. I don't know who that's for right there, but he is, ah, he's drawing somebody back to his feet. He's drawing somebody back to the altar. He's drawing somebody back in the purpose. He's drawing somebody. He's drawing me. Somebody say deeper. He's drawing me deeper. He's drawing somebody. Thank you, Lord. Some of y'all thought that was for somebody who was unsaved, but some of the people that have been walking with him, you've been walking distant from him. He said he's drawing you back to your first love. He's drawing you back to his word. He's drawing you back to repentance. He's drawing you back to intimacy. He's drawing us. Draw me nearer. Nearer, precious Lord. Ah. Sing it. I feel the presence of God in this. Right, y'all ready for week three of the upgrade because if I this got to be a hard transition because because the spirit's gonna continue to move in this moment I feel him right now he's leading this whole thing and so if you if you can because somebody's having a fit in their home right now because they're remembering <laughs> somebody on the track had to stop running somebody had to pull over your car I know because what I feel in here is God has been drawing somebody and right now there is a sweet anointing that is redirecting. I feel that there is a redirection. Some of y'all were about to do something. God is divinely redirecting you. Holy Spirit is saying, rerouting, <laughs> rerouting the route. Hallelujah. I feel this so strongly. There's just a prophetic on me right now. And I need to let you know, God, the Holy Spirit said that some of you were about to make a life altering decision this week. And this moment of praise, this moment of interruption, God said, I'm redirecting you. This is not for everybody, but this is confirmation for somebody. That's what pro prophecy is for. God says, I'm rerouting you. And the destination will not change. But the way you get there will cause you to have faith in me. He's saying, hold up, wait. <laughs> He's rerouting you. Father, I pray for the obedience of whoever that's for in the name of Jesus. Whoever they have to disappoint or whatever they have to renew and reschedule, Father God, I thank you in the name of Jesus that they will have the presence of mind to hear you and obey. We trust you and believe you for it. In Jesus' name. Somebody say, we agree? We agree. Amen. Amen. Let's give God one more shout of praise. And, oh, come on, all over the world, all over this arena. Let's give God one more shout of praise. Y'all, I feel all my ancestors. I feel, no, 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 I don't even, like, I feel the weight of generations of people who've been crying out for a move of God. Like, I feel them all behind me. And I just feel like God's saying, push, push. We're going to push. I, I feel this thing. We're about to move a generation. We're about to come off the sideline. You've been looking for a revival? Well, here it is. There is, a, there is a cloud of witnesses that are saying, let's go. Let's take territory. Let's flip this world upside down. These are faith. These are faith.
These are the ones that's gonna flip this whole thing upside down. Have your way, God. Whoa. Whoa. If you're at home and like, I can't understand it, just stay with us, baby. It's gonna make sense here in a second. But God's about to. Uh, That's why we're doing this series. That's the whole reason we're doing this series. God said the territory that you're about to take, you can't do it without the power of the Holy Spirit. So, so, so you can get your money right and you can have your salvation intact and you can be saved by grace. But if you don't get this power, I can't take you outside of these four walls and impact the seven mountains. I can't take you into government and entertainment and education. I can't take you there without power. We need the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the helper, the power of the advocate. That's what a move of God is going to come out of. It's not a stadium. It's not a good worship song. It's not us being able to have good graphics and LEDs. It's the power. What happened on Azusa Street in the early 1900s, they didn't have no technology. All they had was the power of the Holy Ghost. And it turned the whole I feel this thing. There is a power. Oh God, I feel this thing. There is a power coming to the church. Somebody say power. power. I said say power. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Spirit. God with us. Somebody say power. That's why, oh my God. That's why he told the disciples, wait here. Wait here. Wait until you get endued with. The reason why the upgrade is so important is because there's boardrooms you're going to go into that you're not going to have the intellectual prowess to know what to do. But the power of the Holy Ghost is going to come up on you and it's not got to be crazy and weird and I'm not talking about falling out. I'm talking about the power of the Holy Spirit telling you the things to come. I'm talking about the power of the Holy Spirit giving you cunning and witty and understanding. There's going to be somebody shout at me, power! Woo! We will not be a powerless church. Ain't nobody going to do this for another decade with no power. I'm not going to come up here and preach and try to make good sermons and get good graphics and good illustration for us to go home and be defeated alone. Not when on the inside of us somebody shout, I have power. Oh, you better believe that somebody say, I have power. I have power. Oh. Holy Spirit, help me. What some of y'all are feeling right there, that's the Holy Spirit. He's, he's, he's moving on the inside of you. There's impressions coming on your heart right now. There's ideas and things that he's bringing back to your remembrance. There's dreams that he's awakening in this moment right now. There are things that he's correcting and saying, you're about to do that. Shut that down. You never even asked me about that. That's the power we have. And his name is the Holy Spirit. Have your way, God. Well, today I want to welcome you to week three of a series we're calling, somebody help me, The Upgrade. And um, if you feel what we feel in here right now, I'm already sweating. I've already come out of my glasses and I ain't even started nothing. But we need the power of the Holy Spirit to live our everyday lives. And um, what I've been tasked with, Bishop, what I've been tasked with, Charles, is I want to take away the miscommunication or the misrepresentation of the Holy Spirit. Like my job, can I be very frank with you guys? Can I be frank? I need to take the fear out of the Holy Spirit. Because you flee from what you fear. 
And because many of us has feared what would happen if the Holy Spirit took over, we have fleed from him. But that is the very thing that gives us power to live an overcoming Christian life. The reason why you're still struggling with the addictions is because you've shut up the Holy Spirit in your life. And today I want to take away the mystery and I want to take it. No, we can't take away the mystery because we're not even going to understand all of it. But I want to take away the misunderstandings and more than anything, the fear of the Holy Spirit. Can you write down my first point real quick? The Holy Spirit is your friend and he's not weird. I have to be this practical with the point because everybody needs to understand no matter what your big mama did and no matter what they did at that one church or no matter those people who brought pets in and started doing stuff with snakes, that ain't the Holy Spirit. And some of us equate that with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is my friend. Somebody say the Holy Spirit is my friend. And watch this. He's not weird. Can I tell you the truth about it? The people are weird. And can I be very frank? They would be weird with or without the Holy Spirit. (laughs) People are weird. Let let me tell you, I I heard this poll that it said one in three people are weird. So look to your left and look to your right. If neither one of them look weird, it's you. (laughs) I'm just playing. The actual statistic is one in two. Um, But anyway, what, what I'm saying to you is the Holy Spirit is not weird. He's a gentleman. And can I say something else? He's not forceful, he's faithful. He's not about to force his way in. The reason why I'm up here sweating and I'm begging you to accept the person of the Holy Spirit is because he's not going to force his way in. He's a gentleman. He's going to stand at the door of your life and he's going to knock. And he's going to be faithful. He's going to keep knocking. When you was at that job, he knocked. When you were with that group of friends, he knocked. When you were in jail, he knocked. And when you were in the penthouse, he knocked. He's been knocking at the door of your heart and the door of your life. And he's saying, when you let me in, he is faithful, but he's not forceful. And this is where a lot of believers are like, well, if God wants to do something, just tell him to take over. The greatest thing that God gave all of us, and you see it traced all the way back to Adam and Eve in the garden, is choice. The reason why God gave us choice is because he did not want to be worshipped by robots. Robots don't have a choice. Let me say it very clearly. It can't be love if you can't choose. If the person you're in relationship with didn't choose to love you, you wouldn't want that unauthentic relationship. And God wants a real or an authenticated relationship with you. So he has to put on the table the option. That's why Adam and Eve, somebody once told me like, why didn't he just take the tree of the knowledge of good and evil out of the garden? Because that would have negated love out of their relationship. Because they had to choose to obey him. They had to choose to love him. And that's where God is saying to you, choose the Holy Spirit. Choose the upgrade. And I don't know, maybe you're like the people um, that that are listening right now. There's three types of people that are listening. See, we're on week three. Everybody say week three. (laughs) So we have weeded out all the people who don't really want to go to the next level now. The only people that are on and watching this and re-watching this is the people that really want to check into the upgrade. It is statistically known from from the people and the data that we get that in the first two weeks of the series, that's when the crowd is there. They're trying to see what it is. But once we get into it, then we'll know by week three who's about to actually progress in their journey through this topic. And so I just want to, can we give it up for everybody who is a part of service today? Oh, come on. In the chat, I want you to give some claps. Because you're willing to transform. And today I didn't come to play with the revelation. I got to go deep with it today. So I need you to understand where we are and what we're doing. And if you haven't watched the other two, I want you to go back and get them. But today everybody's saying we're going to the deep. The The only reason we can go to the deep because we know at Transformation Church the word of the year is anchor. And if we're going to be anchored, you don't need an anchor in shallow water. So God has told us go to the deep. So today we're going to the deep. And there are three types of people that are watching and participating in this series. When the Holy Spirit is knocking on your life, I want to know, are you a door shutter? Y'all know what a door shutter is, right? You know when somebody comes to visit your house or to deliver a package or try to come sell you something? You don't even go to the door to figure out who it is. You say the door is shut. 
leave it at the door. I'll get it when I want to, but I'm not going to have any interaction with that person or these people. And the crazy thing about it is that's what some people have done to the door of their life and the room, the house of their life as the Holy Spirit through this series is trying to come knock on the door. Let me give you a picture of it right now. This is the door of your life. And the Holy Spirit is trying to deliver some gifts to you. He's trying to give you something and he knocks on the door of your life. Is somebody at the door? Oh, I'm asleep. I'm not, I ain't <laughs> the upgrade. <laughs> oh, no, I ain't opened the door for him. He's been chasing me down since I was in high school. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. No, that's, mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm not here. No. Did he, oh, shoot, he keep coming back. It's been six days he's been trying to. Let me see if it's the same one. Oh, that's him, that's him, that's him, that's him. <laughs> and the crazy thing about it is, this will be the picture of your life for the next decade. Every day, the Holy Spirit is coming through television, through books, through Instagram posts, through friends, through people. He's trying to get your attention. He's knocking at the door of your heart. He's trying to lead you to Jesus. But the problem is you're a door shutter. And the problem is that the gifts that he has for you are going to transform your life. See, you can't see him from the outside right now. But he has gifts that will change the quality of everything around you. But you have to open the door. And the problem is spiritually so many of you have been shut off. Maybe because of tradition, maybe because of religion, maybe because of even hurt. But today I'm asking you, don't be a door shutter. Don't keep the only one who can come and clean your house out of your house. The only one that can come and repair what's broken. You've tried alcohol, you've tried sex, you've tried success, you've tried notoriety, and none of them can fix the walls of your emotions. But the Holy Spirit... It's knocking at the door. And, and you still ignoring him. But see, that's not the only person watching. That's only one type of person. There's some other people that are watching today. And some of y'all are what I call <laughs> your door openers. But you're not like going actually open to let him in. Your door blockers. So the Holy Spirit comes to your door. Hold up, I'm coming. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got Instagram. I got friends. I got family. It ain't my priority. I'm coming. I promise I'm coming. Well, let me go. Hold on, y'all. Hold on one second because I'll be right back. I'm on live. Hold on. Let me go answer the door real quick. <laughs> Hello? And what you do is you stand in the door. You're letting them know, you're letting the Holy Spirit know very clearly, I'm here, but you ain't getting in. This is what I call the lukewarm Christian. I, I, I need you to see this. I need you to see this, that you'll stand here all day and you'll listen. Oh, really? Oh, you want to help? Okay, that's great. No, no, no. No, I just wanted to make sure. Okay, yeah, I'll go to service. I'll watch online. I'll post scriptures. That's awesome. I still go club on the weekends. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. I'll make other things a priority. No, that's really cool that you would like to come in, but I really know that right here is kind of where I want our relationship to stay. And, and I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. To my family members who are less saved, I'll quote scriptures, but to, the, <laughs> to my friends and family who still like to turn up, I don't want to be fake around them. So I'll just stay in this lukewarm door blocking situation. And what God is saying to us as a church is how long will we keep the Holy Spirit at the door? How long will you stay lukewarm in your pursuit of God? How long will you be able to act like he's the Lord, but he's actually just an option? And the Holy Spirit continues to come in and he's trying to let you know that he has something for you, but he's a gentleman. He's not going to be forceful. 
He's going to be faithful. And there's other people that are watching today, and these are my type of people. These are the people that when the Holy Spirit knocks, they anticipating the knock. You hear, oh. <laughs> How are you doing, Holy Spirit? You are the ones who are door openers. Come in. Come on in. Do whatever you want to do. Matter of fact, do you need something? I'm at your service. And when he comes back the next day, come on, when he comes back the next day, oh, you, the door's open. <laughs> come on in, Holy Spirit. And when he comes with another package, and when he tries to come through, the door is open. He already knows. He already knows. My question to you is, will you be one that says this one phrase by the end of this series? Welcome, Holy Spirit. See, see, see. The, the, the person who's the door shutter and the person who's the door blocker, they're not saying welcome. Only the person who is the door opener. And what God has put a burden on my heart that every person in this whole world that watches this would say, is somebody just say, welcome, Holy Spirit. The crazy thing about when you welcome somebody, watch this. You have to move out of the way. And there's people that until you move out of the way and say, God, whatever you want to do, yeah. you have to move your pride. Yeah. You have to move tradition. Yeah. You have to move religion. Yeah. You have to move being able to try to figure it out and explain everything. Somebody just say, welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. And I'm not telling you which one you are today. But if you are a door shutter or a door blocker, it's time for you to get an upgrade revelation so that you can welcome the Holy Spirit into your life. Yeah. This is week three of the series. And I said, God, so how do you want me to help, help them get a welcome? Y'all know those people you don't want to come to the house? Come on, let's be honest. Like you made a date and you told them you was, they could come over and then when they show up, you like... I wonder, is that how the Holy Spirit feels in your life? That today you're saying, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. And tomorrow when he tells you, don't go on that lunch date. Come flood this place and feel the atmosphere. Don't go on that vacation. I plan this pre-pandemic. And this is a year after I thought I was... And the Holy Spirit's saying to you today, it, it doesn't matter how you feel about it. Welcome me in because I need something that I can own. There is something that only I can fix. And I've just been hearing the Holy Spirit say, I can fix it. I can fix that. I can fix that. Say it with me. I can fix You can't, but he can and as I was looking at this, God said, Michael, I want you to stay on the number three today. And I said, okay, this is week three of the series. There's a fact that three is the biblical number of harmony, completeness, and God's presence. God is three in one. Go back and watch the past two series. You'll find that out. When Jesus was born, the Magi, they brought three gifts. Jesus lived 33 years, and Jesus rose on the third day. What I found is you need all three. The title of my message today is you need all three. Say that with me. You need all three. That's going to make a lot of sense here in just a minute. When I found out about the Holy Spirit and I started to, to, really, to really understand, you need all three persons of God. You need God the Father, God the Son, that's Jesus, and God, Holy Spirit. Somebody say you need all three. And as I begin to drill down on the Holy Spirit and go deeper, I found out that there's three things that the Holy Spirit has been commissioned initially to do in our lives. I want you to go to John 16, verse 8. We're just going to get to know about the Holy Spirit today. Okay. Yeah. John 16, verse 8. And he says, when he comes, the Holy Spirit, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. And the reason why I put this here is because in our day and age, we have a bad view of the word convict. Yeah. 
Anytime you hear the word convict, you think it's a bad thing. It's like, oh, they got convicted or not. But let me redeem that word for you. Another word that can help you real quick is convince. The Holy Spirit's job is to convince you of these three things. The first thing the Holy Spirit is trying to convince you is that you have sin and you need a savior. You never ask for somebody to fix something that you don't think is broken. There's some of y'all right now in your homes, there are things that broken, but you have jerry-rigged them so long that you don't even think that they broke it no more. It's not until somebody else comes in and says, you know that ain't supposed to work like that. You'd be like, man, it's been like that for six years. The Holy Spirit is trying to convince you of your sin and trying to lead you to a savior. The second thing that the Holy Spirit, I want you to understand these foundational things, because let me just give you scripture. First Corinthians 12, three, it says, no one can say, that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. You meet the Holy Spirit before you meet anybody else in the Trinity. He's trying to draw you from a young age. He's trying to say, and you'd be like, something told me that was the Holy Spirit. I just felt that was the Holy Spirit. I don't even know why that was the Holy Spirit. And what he's trying to do is lead you to Jesus. The second job of the Holy Spirit, and I like this one, is to convince you that we are the righteousness of Christ. See, this one is a hard thing to believe, that when you get saved by faith, after he does the first thing and convinces you you have sin and you need a savior, then he's going to convince you that, hey, you're righteous. You're in right standing with God. No, man, I messed up again. No, I'm telling you what Jesus did for the propitiation of your sins. There's nothing you can do, but God, I looked at it again. There's nothing you can do. The Holy Spirit is fighting your own thoughts about your salvation. Do you know how many days the Holy Spirit has to remind me that God called me to be the pastor of Transformation Church and I didn't call myself? He was convincing me, well, I was a bad dad this week, or I wasn't a present husband this week, or I didn't do enough this week. And the Holy Spirit said, boy, snap out of it. When you gave your life by faith to Jesus, you have been made righteous. Now watch this, not by performance, by position. And any other foundation that you build your life on other than that is a toxic theology. Well, now I need to do this so God will accept me. When you put your life in his hands by faith, your eternity was secured. Now you got to figure out how to live. And the Holy Spirit knew that we would doubt ourselves, that we would down ourselves, that we would listen to the lies of the enemy. So the Holy Spirit's second job is to convince you that you have been made right with God. No, you've been made right with God. No, I know you messed up, but you are right with God. Like, I know you got drunk last night, but you are right with God. When you repent, when you turn, you are right with God. And I know this is messing with some people's religion. Because at your church, they kept you coming back to God through manipulation. So they made you think that every bad thing that you did meant that you needed to redo every good thing that you've done. <laughs> but what that is, is demonic. What, what, what Christ said was any man that be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, ta-da, abracadabra, everything has become new. And now we have to be regenerated or reformed or renewed or transformed into the image of Christ. But my eternity is secure when I put my faith in Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit is trying to convince me, you need a Savior because you're a sinner. But after you put your faith in him, you're right. You're in right standing with God. That's his second job. Can I tell you the third job? The reason I'm going so line upon line and systematic is so many people have been robbed of these truths and they live their life trying to earn what has already been freely given. And this is the third job of the Holy Spirit is to convince us that Satan has been defeated. We give the enemy so much daggone credit. Well, what if the enemy? F him. Forget him. Thank you, Mom. All I'm saying to you is that the Holy Spirit was there when he fell like lightning. The Holy Spirit was there when Jesus went down. Uh, remember three and one, he went down and snatched the keys of death, hell, and the grave. The Holy Spirit knows. He's like, the enemy ain't got no power over you. 
And he has, why does he have to convince us? Because somehow we believe the lie that we're powerless. But my Bible tells us we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. That we have the same power that raised him up from the dead and lives inside of us. And his name is Holy Spirit. You got this. That's what the Holy Spirit is. He's a coach. You got this. You can raise those kids. You can work that business. You can be the boss. Uh, The enemy can't stop you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. He's convincing you daily that because of what Christ has done, you have been given authority and the enemy has no power. Somebody say, we need all three. three. I need all three of those things. I need to be convinced or convicted that I'm a sinner. See, see, the greatest moment of my Christian walk didn't come in a church. It was when I crawled out of somebody's bed that I wasn't supposed to be in. And I was on the drive home. And the weight of conviction that was in that car with me at the moment the enemy told me I would be feeling good, at the moment that, it, it, that I should have been like, we did it, nobody knows, I made it happen, that felt good. And at that moment is when the conviction, the Holy Spirit sat in that car with me. And all he was trying to do is convince me, that ain't the way you want to live. You don't want to be crawling out of people's beds like that. I called you to be a man of God. I called you to have a family and raise arrows that would be in my hand. I asked you. I asked you. I, from the time you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. I know who I called you to be. You be living two-faced. That's a counterfeit, Michael, right now. The level of conviction. There was no pastor. There was no preacher. There was no prophet. It was just me and the Holy Spirit. Oh, and he was convincing me. He was telling me, he said, you need a savior. And in that purple Chrysler Sebring, I pulled the car over with no worship music playing. You don't need all of this to give your life completely to the Holy Spirit. On the side of the road, on my way home, trying to figure out how I would sneak back into my parents' home. The conviction of the Holy Spirit found me. And I believed I needed a savior. But can I tell you more of the story? Three weeks later, I was good for three weeks. I was resolved for three weeks. I I I I knew that God had changed me and transformed me for three weeks. But I got in a moment of weakness. And I went back again. And when I got in the car that time, the Holy Spirit's conviction or convincing came again, but he had a little different tone. Hey, you need to repent. You need to turn from this. Hey, you're going to heaven. Your eternity is secure, but your future is in jeopardy. You missed it. (laughs) Your eternity is secure. You'll spend forever in heaven, but if you keep up this, your future is in jeopardy. And there was a different level of convincing or conviction that came on me that time. And the Holy Spirit was so gently telling me, you're still righteous. You're still righteous. You're still in right standing with God because of what Jesus did. But now you need to embrace right living. Okay. I need to help somebody right here. So when we talk about righteousness, that is our eternal position. When we talk about right living, that is a process in the Bible Um, I'm I'm termed sanctification. This is the process or the journey of being made into the image of Christ. I'll cuss you out today, but hopefully six years from now, I'm still not as quick to cuss you out because I've been being sanctified. I've been on a journey of progression, not perfection. My eternity is secure, but I'm trying to get my future in alignment. I'm trying to get in the right place so I can be all God has called me to be. I'm trying to be trusted. And so my righteousness, who was convincing me of that? The Holy Spirit. And then it goes a year. The person that I was falling into this situation with moved away. 
It feel like I had victory over this. And then they decided to come back. And when I found out they were back in the city, it was like the enemy convinced me, you're not going to make it. <laughs> you know how easy you fell last time? And there was all of these voices. And guess who came to convict, I mean convince me that the enemy had no power of me? The Holy Spirit said, bro, she could move in next door. But what you have been doing in this last year to build up your inner man? Uh, you've been putting the Bible in you. And you can stand like Jesus and say, no, 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 it is written. There are some different principles and guardrails and accountability and community. The devil has no power over you. And I came to tell somebody, you better let the Holy Spirit convince you that the enemy has no power. He has been defeated. He's under my feet. There's not enough preaching telling you that you have power over depression. You have power over temptation. You have, uh, you have power over impure thoughts. Cast down every vain imagination that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. The enemy is defeated. And my convincer is the Holy Spirit. Somebody say, you need all three. I need the Holy Spirit to do that in my life every day. You need all three. And some of you haven't even got one of those. You're watching this message right now, and you still think you can live any type of way. And you have not been convinced that you're a sinner and you need a Savior. And so that means you have not been made right with God. And that means the enemy's being able to tell you all kinds of crap. And the crazy thing is you believe it. We need all three. Look at Hebrews 6, 1. I got to go to the Bible this entire sermon because I need y'all to get this. I got stopped in my tracks. Y'all know your pastor is on a journey of progression. I don't act like I know everything about the Bible because I don't. And any pastor who does, run. We are all on a journey of becoming. I've read this scripture in Hebrews 6 a thousand times. But when I was saying you need all three, the Holy Spirit was showing me something that, that we need all three of that I've never seen in my life. Let's see if you can figure it out. It said, so let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ. Any scripture that starts like that, beware. So let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again. Let us go on instead and become, what is that cuss word? Mature. Oh, in our understanding. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. Watch this one. This is where it got me. You don't need further instruction about baptisms. You don't need further instructions about baptisms. The laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. How many baptisms is there? Because before God showed me this revelation, I thought there was one. Like, I need to be baptized in water. Like, you know what I'm saying? Baptized. But this thing called me. You don't need further instruction. They said this was elementary teaching. They said this was basic, and I felt like the kid in class that was like, I didn't get, I was, I was sick. When y'all covered it, y'all know how you do I wasn't there. Did we have a, because it said, let's stop going over basic teachings. You don't need further instructions about baptisms, plural. So that made me go to the word. And y'all, guess what I found out? There's not one baptism. There's not two baptisms. There's three baptisms. And you need all three. Can I walk you through it real quick? Because some of you, this is going to be the illumination or the light or the revelation that you need to be able to take your next step on the progression of your faith and journey. L listen to this. Write down the word salvation. The first baptism is the baptism of salvation. And this is what I want everybody to know. 
Write this point down. The Holy Spirit baptizes us in Jesus. Remember earlier when I was saying it's the Holy Spirit that is drawing you? It's the Holy Spirit. The first part of the Godhead that you meet is the Holy Spirit. And what he is trying to do is baptize you into salvation. That's what happens when you say that prayer according to Romans 10, 9. That's what happened. You are being baptized into Jesus. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. Again, for by one spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, we were all, what is that word? Baptized into one body, and that's the body of Christ. So when you, by faith, put your belief in Jesus the Holy Spirit spiritually submerged you and you came up in a Jesus suit. When God sees you now, he sees you dripping in Jesus. That's why when he looks for sin after you put your faith in him, he don't see you no more. He sees his son stretched out on the cross. And he said the man who know, knew no sin became sin. He became it so that we could be made what? In right standing with God. The first baptism everybody needs to know about is the baptism of salvation. And the crazy thing about this is when you get baptized and your salvation is, is, is secure, you need to know your future is secure for eternity. You're going to heaven. I want to normalize that heaven is not the goal. I'm going to say it because nobody's going to say it. Oh, you're just trying to get to heaven. Just trying to get to heaven. When we all get to heaven. And listen. If God wanted us in heaven, he wouldn't have made earth. Spoil alert. We're coming back to earth. Some of y'all haven't read that far in your Bible. The goal is not heaven. The goal is a new heaven and a new earth. I'm messing with somebody. The, the goal is not heaven. The, the goal is eternal fellowship with the Father. Whether that be in heaven, whether that be on earth. That's why we pray. Let your will be done and your kingdom come on as it is. He said, wherever you are, I need to have king domain. I need. Let me stop. I'm talking that kingdom talk now and that messes with people. Stay with me. What I'm saying to you is baptism into salvation secures your future. You're going to heaven. At the end of the service today, once and for all, you can stop playing the hopscotch game in and out of sin. Maybe get out of hell free card. Let's end all of that. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Your eternity is secure. The first baptism is the baptism of salvation. Okay? But number two, write this point down. Because this point has to do with water. So, 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 so in baptism number one, which I need, I get salvation. But baptism number two includes water. And this is the crazy thing. is So many churches have made baptism number one the end goal, but it was the start, not the finish. So when we celebrate, how many people have gotten saved at Transformation Church this year? 20, 20, how many? 29,000 people. Can we give God? Y'all missing it. 29,000 people walked through this door. 29,000 people said, I'm going to get saved. Twenty nine thousand eternity secure. As we celebrate that, and please believe that's what we're going to celebrate because this church, the whole reason we are formed is to represent God to the lost and found for one reason, and it's transformation in Christ, that they would get this first baptism. But I would be a horrible leader if we just celebrated this first step and not encourage you to take the next step. Do y'all know this was some of Jesus' last words 
to his disciples. Can I show you in Matthew? Let's go to the word real quick, okay? I need y'all to see this. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, this is Jesus talking. He says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. What does he take for them to do? Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Write this point down. Disciples baptized in water. So the first thing you need to know is that the Holy Spirit is doing the baptism at salvation into Jesus. But then disciples, and all disciples means are disciplined ones, ones who have put their faith in Jesus Christ. How many disciples do I got in the building right now? Come on, in the chat. If you're a disciple, put your hands up. Okay? So that means disciples are to baptize in water. This is what we see as a symbol and a sign a public declaration that our past is no longer dictating our future. Yeah, yeah. Baptism into water, write this down, buries your past. See, the worst thing is to walk through this door and my eternity is secure, but every mistake I made before still keeps me in limbo. So everybody's trying to be reminded of their past, and God's saying, no, 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 no. I want you to go make a public spectacle. Yeah. Invite all your exes. <laughs> Invite everybody to see that you are going down as a sign in water of the burial that was Jesus Christ's burial, and you would come back up or resurrect a new person. My name is Michael, but the old Michael went down, and when I walked through this door of water baptism, a new Michael has emerged. Some of y'all miss me. How do you do that? Watch this word, by faith. How did you receive salvation? By faith. How do you receive water baptism? By faith. This is something that every person needs to experience after being saved. See, some of us were drugged by our parents to come down and be baptized. And we got cute little pictures, but it meant nothing for your life because you didn't know what you were doing and you didn't know what it meant. I don't care if you're 60 years old, have $3 million in the bank. If you've only received the first baptism, it's time to receive baptism number two. I don't care if you got hair plugs or weave, wear a swim cap. It's time to get submerged. I don't care what's going on in your life right now that makes you think you're too dignified. If Jesus, the son of man, got baptized, what makes you think? Uh-oh, let me stop. I'm getting too ahead of myself. You need to be baptized. In water. And when you bury your past publicly, yeah. it's almost like this wedding ring. Yeah. This wedding ring doesn't make me married. It shows that I'm married. Wow. And some of y'all have had a side chick savior. You need all the benefits in the dark, <laughs> but you won't represent in the light. And God's saying to somebody today, Hey, would you not just claim me as a side chick savior and walk through the first baptism? But can we make this thing public? Can we be Facebook official now? I've been covering you and providing for you for years of your life. Would you let the world know that you are unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? It is the power of God unto salvation. You need to be baptized in water. But that's only two baptisms. The two were precursors to the last one. You need to be baptized in salvation. I feel the presence already. And you need to be baptized in water. But let me help you with the last one. You need the Spirit. Salvation, water, and the Spirit. Jesus baptizes us in the Holy Spirit. Can I make it plain? The Holy Spirit draws you to be baptized into Jesus. Salvation. Disciples, me and you, who's the minister here? You are. We baptize in water as a public sign that the old is gone and we've been buried with Christ and we've been raised again to new life. But then Jesus turns around and baptizes us in 
the Holy Spirit. And this gives you power to live your life. The reason why people are getting jacked up in this life is because they have two baptisms when you need all three. Somebody say you need all three. I didn't say it's nice to have all three. I didn't say it could be good to have all three. Somebody say you need all three. I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to prove it to you. Jesus baptized us, us into the Holy Spirit. I'm going to show you in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Because some of y'all is like, oh, that's only one place. I'm going to show you four times. Matthew 3, verse 11. I indeed, that's Jesus talking. Or this is John talking. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. This is John. So that's salvation. Okay? So John's saying, I baptized you into salvation. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He, underline this in your Bible, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Oh, I'm about to get too excited. Mark 1.8, indeed, I indeed baptize you with water, but he, capital H, will baptize you with the what? Holy Spirit. Luke 3, 16. John answers saying to all, I indeed baptize. These are other people's accounts. I need everybody to understand. One person didn't hear this. All four of them heard this. And I indeed baptize you with water. But one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal straps, who air Jesus is, I am not worthy to lose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Last one, John 1, 33. I did not know him. I didn't know him. But he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, upon whom you see the spirit descending and remaining on him. That's Jesus. This is he who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. You need all three. You need to be baptized into salvation. You need to be baptized into water, and you need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And, and a lot of people mess it up because of grammar. They say that you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but the scripture is very clear. You need the baptizing, baptism in the Holy Spirit or with the Holy Spirit. See, the baptism of is salvation. That's, that's what um, the Holy Spirit leads you into. But what you need to know is once you get saved, eternity secure, once you are water baptized, past buried, what you need to know is to live this life, you need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Can I ask you a question? Was Jesus our example? No, I need you to say it out loud. Type it in, in the chat. Was Jesus our example? Okay. So if Jesus was our example and he had all three of these, what makes you think you can live without it? Remember what I said? Salvation, water, spirit. Salvation, water, spirit. Say it. Salvation, water, spirit. One more time. Salvation. Okay, watch this. Remember those three. When the Bible tells us that Jesus was baptized in Matthew 3, Jesus didn't need salvation because he was salvation. When we come into Christ, we are born again. He was born right the first time. So he didn't need salvation. He was salvation. Okay? Is that clear? So he was salvation. But then Luke 3.22, or Luke 3, Jesus get baptized by John. And John, like me, would be like, Jesus, you don't need to do this. He literally tried to convince him not to get baptized. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. This must be done. I'm an example. There's going to be some stubborn young man that is watching this 
and doesn't think that it takes all that to perfect. God knows my heart. Yeah, he does know your heart, but he watches your actions. And what God is saying to somebody right now is that Jesus did this whole act over 2,000 years ago so that you would know that nobody is exempt from this type of behavior. If you're too cool to get baptized in water or you have too many complications and this doesn't look good for your MO, you can keep all of that, baby. But for the God who went to the cross for me, if he set an example to, for what I need to do to represent our relationship, I need all three. And Jesus get baptized. And what happens directly after he gets baptized? After he goes down in water, look at Luke 3.22, the spirit comes. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. This is the anointing right here. It's God's approval right here. You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Can I tell you that once you experience all three of these baptisms, something crazy happens at this last baptism. God's approval gets on to you. There is stuff that you've been trying to do without being baptized in the Spirit that as soon as you get baptized in water and you allow the Spirit of God to baptize you, the approval of God, this is my daughter. This is the business. This is the church and whom I'm well pleased. You need resources to be released. You need impact to go all over the world. Get all three and watch how God, Jesus starts doing all the miracles we read about. Every miracle that you heard about happened after Jesus got all three. I'm teaching the Bible good up here right now. And some of y'all have been debating of how to make things happen. Trying to skip the last step because somebody was weird about it. What I'm telling you is you can be perfectly normal. Have a right mind and be intoxicated by the Holy Spirit. See, that word intoxication, I'm not going to spoil it maybe for a later week, but, but literally, th that word, do y'all know when y'all pass by the liquor stores? What do they call them? Wine and spirits. Do you know why they call them? Wine and spirits is because the contents is so strong that when you drink it, it should change everything about you. If you take a drink to the head, it, change, uh, it changes everything about you. And there are some of you that have been trying to change yourself and trying to make things happen on your own. But I'm telling you, after you are salvation baptized and water baptized, baby, come with me and get spirit baptized and watch it change your speech. Watch it change the way you act. Watch it change everything about you. Holy Spirit, baptize us. Oh, I feel that thing. Holy Spirit, baptize us. Okay, I'm gonna show you like this. I'm gonna show you like this. Is this helping anybody? Somebody say, you need, all three. you need all three. And I'm praying by the end of this series that you would not ignore the knock of the Holy Spirit on your life. That, that this message is a knock for you. And he's saying, let me in so I can be your power source to live life. I saw this picture of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Um, this right here, if you could come close real quick. This is a power source but it represents the Trinity. This is three in one. My dad used to have these, he used to have a studio and he used to get these type of chords. And I woke up this morning and the Holy Spirit showed me a picture of this that I saw when I was young. And he said, this accurately depicts the power of God in every person's life. This is hooked up to a source that if anything gets plugged into this, if you get plugged into the power source, you are able to be empowered to do different things. And the problem with this is this is how many of, of, of us look when it comes to our God equation. 
that the Father, Son, Holy Spirit are all equal sitting right here and you have nothing plugged into them. You are sitting here trying to figure out how to power your own life. And there is available power for each one of you right now. And I felt God say this so clearly that everything in your life is going to come from this Trinity power source, the upgrade. This is what you need for the rest of your life. And I'm going to show you what happens at salvation, at water baptism, and at the um, a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Will y'all walk with me just for a second? I want to show you what God will do in your life. See, when you accept Jesus Christ as your anchor, ooh, I feel the presence of God already. When you accept him as your anchor and you connect to God as the power source, what ends up happening, watch this right now, you get light for the rest of your life. And some of you need to understand that your light is not going to turn off because you're connected to an eternal source. Your salvation is secure. You have girt, hold it onto a grip to a strong and sturdy anchor, and he will not let you down. Somebody say, I have an anchor. And this is what happens at salvation. But this is what most of our lives look like. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm not going to hell. Yes. And then you have to live 60 years of life, hell on earth. Can we be very clear? Your internal destination is heaven, but your life's a living hell. It's only because you've used one of the three available sources of power. And so the Holy Spirit says, come be baptized in water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come get filtered. See, this has a level of pH that is probably okay to drink, but is not the best. When I plug this in, what it's going to produce is a filtration system that what comes out is not what you see right here. This represents the baptism in water. That when we go down and go through the process, what comes out on the other side may look the same, but baby, it don't taste the same. It may look the same, but it don't taste the same. And God's saying, would you get water baptized and plug into me? So that when people drink from you, when your family drinks from you. Come on, look, something's changing on the inside. When you go to that job, oh, I feel the presence of God. It may look the same. When people have conversation with you, it tastes different. When they come to Transformation Church, <laughs> why, why I've been to churches before, this doesn't, this doesn't feel like, no, 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 no. Because we have decided that our old life, the life of pride, the life of, of, of being seen, the life where we got to get the credit, that was crucified with Christ. It's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives on the inside of me. Galatians, go check that out on your free time. What I'm telling you right now is it may look the same, but it's not the same. Mm, that's some good water right now. And guess what? When you get baptized, this is what your coworkers drink. When you make a public display and you usually only post about aesthetics and, and home design and your trucks, but then randomly on your feed comes up, I got baptized. Would you mess up your, your social media aesthetic? To let the world know what God has done for you, how he's filtered out the mess and the sin in your life. And he's made you something that's worth drinking. See, the crazy thing about it is that's where most people stop. I have eternal light or life. I've been changed. But then now I got to live life. Oh, shoot. How am I about to live life? Hold on, let me... And make sure I got enough. Yep. I got enough. The water baptism, yeah, it's good. But now I got all this stuff around me. No, oh, yeah. Let me let me just go. I'm saved. I got eternal life. 
but let me try to self-power through purity. Let me try to self-power <laughs> through my finances. No, come on down on the floor with me. Come on, come on down here. Let me try to, to get my business off the ground by myself. And this is what many of us look like. This is what your spiritual real life looks like. God, why aren't you hearing me? How am I going to have good relationships? How am I going to get to the intended destination? How am I going to stop watching pornography? Oh, no. I touched something and my feeble hands broke it. It broke the relationship. And now I got to try to raise kids. No, it's conference time. It's conference. That's good. That's so good. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, God. Would you just take this life away from me? I'm trying not to be depressed. I put on the new Elevation Mad City, but I don't. And this is what many of you look like raising kids. It looks good on the ground, but there's no breath. There's no pneuma. That means the spirit of God. Do you know that's the only thing out of creation that God put his hands on? You. It said he spoke everything else into existence, but he formed you. And then it said he put the pneuma of God, the spirit of God, the breath of God, the on the inside of you. And the enemy's whole job for your whole life is to take your breath away, to take the spirit out of you. And he's done a good job to make you think that it's weird and it's crazy, but it kicking your butt to be able to live your life. Because every day you wake up and try to blow your way through relationships. And, and God says, but if you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, there is a power source that is readily available to push you through every situation that you might ever go through. Oh, Holy Spirit! <laughs> Somebody, this is the season where you need to know that you don't just need one, two, but you need all three. You need to go ahead and plug in to the Holy Spirit. And you need to throw over and everything, everything in my life that needs to go from one. I am empowered by the Holy Spirit. Spirit, somebody give God some praise in here. How am I going to live a victorious Christian life? The power of the Holy Spirit. How am I going to be able to stay pure after years of pornography addiction? The power of the Holy. Now watch. They're trying to bring them back. Come behind me. They're trying to get them close to me right now. But the Holy Spirit goes before me. He's around me. You can try to get it close if you want to. But I have a comforter. I have a God. I have an advocate. I have an advantage. If you would allow the Holy Spirit to empower you, you could actually live. Why do you need all three? Because you still need the power to live. Jesus died so you could live. What did he say in John? I came that you might have. Life and life to the full. How do you have a victorious, overcoming, 
Christian life, you have to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, the breath of God, the pneuma of God. Have you ever heard of a pneumatic drill? A pneumatic drill is a drill that is powered by air. <laughs> breath. It takes the air from the outside and it powers it. What the Holy Spirit says, I want to give you a life that has my pneuma in it. The Spirit of God empowering you to live a victorious Christian life. You need all three. How have you been in a relationship for 10 years? Y'all haven't been lovers and partners. You've just been business associates. How is that going to change? You walk through the door of salvation. And get baptized in salvation. Then get baptized in water. And then get baptized in the Holy Spirit. And when you want to say something, the Holy Spirit will say, oh. You missed it. Do you know how many comments I have locked and loaded and ready to go on Instagram? And how many times the Holy Spirit be like, eh, 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 eh. Why? Because he empowers me to live. It says he will give me both the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Have I walked free from pornography for almost a decade? Not because I didn't want to look at it. Oh, y'all going y'all going to act like there's not a desire for the things of my lower nature. But I've been empowered by the Holy Spirit. You know that scripture that says the same spirit. It didn't say same principles. It did not say same worship song. It did not say. It said the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is now resident. His home of choice is, somebody say me. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. I hope scriptures are clicking for you today. Why would you take the power out of the homeowner? He lives in the house and can't set the Wi-Fi passcode. He lives in the house and doesn't have a key to the front door. At salvation, it says he takes up residence. But you got to give him power. And I think about that scripture that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. This is a revelation that changed me in my purity walk. The spirit said to me one day, he said, Michael, if I can raise a dead body, what makes you think that I can't help you manage a living one? And some of you have not released the Holy Spirit to help you manage your attitude, to help you manage your anxiety to help you manage the depression, to help you manage the comparison. Oh, I'm in your business. You are so robbed by what other people have. And the Holy Spirit says, I can make you so content. See, the fruits of the Spirit, maybe I'll talk about this next week, but the fruits of the Spirit are what? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Those are proof that you actually have the Holy Spirit. And he said, the reason why the world doesn't have the fruits of the Spirit, but they wear them on T-shirts, it's because they have not been baptized in me. Getting a tattoo that says love doesn't give you love. For people who disagree with you and don't like you. The only way I can hate somebody and then love them is it has to be supernatural. And the only one that is able to take us into the supernatural is the Holy Spirit. You don't just need salvation. You don't just need water baptism. You also need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You need all three. Let's give God some praise right there.
Just ask the Holy Spirit, what are you trying to say to me right now? Come on, let's just ask him. Holy Spirit, what are you trying to say to me through this message? We ask him every week, Holy Spirit, what are you trying to say to me? Because he's speaking different things to different people right now. Yep. I believe what he's overarching speaking to all of us is take a next step. Take a next step. If you're in this place or in this experience, whether you're watching live or on rebroadcast, and you are out here and the Holy Spirit's been knocking on your door trying to lead you to Jesus. All I'm asking you to do is pray. Maybe, maybe that tug, why everything's not been working out, it's been trying to set up the situation so that you would invite Jesus into your life. And today, maybe you've been far from God, but the Holy Spirit is coming to convince, convict that you're a sinner and you need a Savior. And today, all I'm asking you, if that's you, if you're in that category right now, you've been a door shutter, all I'm asking you to do is let him in. Say, welcome, Holy Spirit. And I want you to be saved today. If you're somebody that's been saved and you've been going back and forth just from salvation to just living, you thought that was it. And maybe because of bad teaching, poor teaching, or you just didn't know. Or maybe you've been rebelling. Or maybe it's just like it's never been broken down so clearly for me. And today you're saying, you know what? I don't just want to be saved. I want to let everybody know. I, I want to, I, maybe I was baptized when I was a kid, but I didn't know what I was doing. I, I, I got sprinkled, but I didn't, as an adult, after salvation, I want to go public. I want to let my coworkers, my boss, my family, my hate, I want to let everybody know that I've been bought with a price and that I'm committed to one who committed to me first. And you know what? I just feel like there's going to be massive baptisms that are going to arise. And me and the team started, I, the Holy Spirit gave me a glimpse of the future. And, and, and so what we're doing is May 23rd is going to be Flood Sunday at Transformation Church. Oh yeah, May 23rd, we're going to have mass community baptisms. It's going to be Flood Sunday. There's going to be water everywhere. And some of y'all saying like, Pastor Mike, how y'all going to do Flood Sunday? The church is not open yet. No, 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 no. You're the minister here. Yeah, yeah, if you need to go back and understand, my job is to equip you for works of service. In Texas, in Florida, in California, remember the point, disciples baptize. So I want you to get together with your community. I want you to get one friend that believes. I want you to get an uncle. I want you to get that auntie. I want you to get, it don't matter about, hey, I feel the presence of God right now. I feel that we're about to start a revolution all over the world. We're going to be in hot tubs and pools. We're going to get in lakes and hotel pools. We're going to get in pond water. And we are going to be baptized in water. That's what I need you to do. Because we need to be able to let everybody know, the world know, that there's a church that's crazy enough to not just follow the message of the Bible, but we follow the method of the Bible. And he said, no, 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 this must be done. That's what Jesus said. So we're going to get baptized. Some, of, some people in the comments are saying right now, I'm getting baptized. Come on, put some waves in the comments if you're going to get baptized. Come on, right now, put your hands. That's me. I'm getting, I don't want just one baptism into salvation. I want the second one too. And if you, listen, this is going to be a huge undertaking, but I told the team this is what our ministry is for. Yeah, yeah. We have decided that we are going to incur the cost and all of the manpower to for every person who signs up for baptisms in the next seven days that we are going to send you an entire baptism kit. It will have videos from me to walk you through it. Salvation prayers. I baptize you now in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will have t-shirts for you. We will have all that other stuff. And I'm telling you, I just feel it, y'all. I believe tens of thousands of people. I don't care what it costs. I don't care what it costs. I don't care what it costs. It's more important than a building. It's more important than I will sell the LED screens. It is important that you be baptized. If you want to be baptized, husbands and wives, I see it right now. 
are going to get baptized. Your relationship, the dead relationship, is going to go down. And what's going to come back up is something new and fresh that God can use. There's teenagers. There's people that have been addicted. There are people who've been molested. Trauma has filled your life. And God says, can I make it new? If you want to be baptized, everybody that's watching now, there will be thousands of people that sign up on the rebroadcast. More people watch during the week. But I want you to be the first ones. If you want to be baptized, I want you to put baptism, I believe, on the screen. And right there, text baptism to 828282. I need you to do that right now. Do it all through the day. If you're watching on rebroadcast, do it. The team has seven days to collect because we got to send it out to you. We got a week to send it out to you. And on the 23rd, what we're going to do is we're going to meet you here. And I have a short message for you that the Holy Spirit has already given me. And then we're going to go get baptized. I want you to record it. Listen, I want you to invite your friends. The ones that think it's weird, they know you're not weird. So when you do it, it's going to prove. It's going to be a witness to them and they're going to get their life changed. Make it a community event you're going to get baptized and you don't need a bunch of people you can only have one or you can make it as big as you want to but transformation nation we getting baptized it's flood sunday on on the may 23rd listen to me the building will not be open i'm gonna be at somebody's pool somewhere baptizing somebody building won't be open what if we take the church outside of the building What if, I'm just saying what if, what if 15,000 people get baptized all over the world, every state, every city? I'm just throwing some vision right now. Listen, I'm even encouraging you. Go to another church if you want to. I don't care. This is kingdom. Go find a life-giving church. Tell them you need to be baptized. Have their youth pastor baptized. Have the janitor baptize you. Are you a disciple? Take me down. Like, you understand what I'm saying? Like, but we will let no formality keep us from the baptism in water. And then today, see, somebody said, well, do you have to do them in order? Help, let me help you. You have to get saved first. You have to make sure your eternity is safe before you can even know what you're committing to with the other two. Okay? Let me be very clear. But we know that the man that was on the cross with Jesus, the thief, he didn't receive water baptism or baptism of the Holy Spirit. He was with Jesus and he believed. And when he believed, Jesus looked over him with one of his last breaths and said, Today, you will be with me where? In paradise. But for everybody who has to still live on earth, to live a victorious Christian life, you need to be water baptized and spirit baptized. And today, I'm going to take the spooky out of all of this. Okay? If we're on a journey... If you want to be baptized by the Holy Spirit, the first thing that you have to do is desire it. And today I believe there are thousands of you that for the first time have desired to be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit, desire is the first step to a destination. And today, I'm not saying what's about to happen to you, but anytime my children have a desire, guess what they do? They ask their father. And today, if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, we're not going to tarry and spit and, and, and stay with you and say, say, hallelujah, 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 until you, not, we're not going to do none of that. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit to fill us up. Can we do that? Would you do me a favor and stand wherever you are right now, all over the world, and just put your hands out like this. And if you want the Spirit of God, if you want to be filled or baptized in the Holy Spirit, 
On the 23rd, as a community, we're going to be water baptized. But today, you can be baptized with the Spirit of God wherever you're watching this. Whether you're watching it on rebroadcast. Well, Pastor Mike, how will I know? How did you get saved? By faith. How do you get water baptized? By faith. How do you get Spirit baptized? By faith. So lift your hands right now. Holy Spirit, by faith. We are asking you to fill us up. Right now, God, we are putting aside all of our questions and all of our doubts and all of our, all of our fears. And we believe that if Jesus said that we would need water baptism, salvation, and to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, Father, we believe today we need that. Spirit of God, Come in and transform our life. Take us from being a shell of ourselves into actually living. Empower our decisions. Empower our daily lives. Welcome Holy Spirit. Come in. Change everything about us. Change the things that we feel like we need to hold on to. Take everything out of us that is not like you. Holy Spirit, create in us a clean heart and renew in us the right spirit, a righteous spirit. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Come on, somebody say that out of your mouth. Say, fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill every doubt. Fill me up. Come on. I need you to begin to let him do it. This is not Pastor Mike. This is God, the Holy Spirit. Come on, say, fill me up. Come on, right now, he's meeting you. Come on, just say that all over the world. Some of y'all need a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit. Right now, ask Him for it. Fill me up. Overflow. Take over, God. Transform me. Come on. Worship is going up all over the world. Holy Spirit, invade us. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. Empower us. Fill us, God. Fill us, God. Say, fill me up. Come on, somebody say, fill me up. Say, until I overflow. Say, until I overflow. Come on, tell God. Let it come out of my family. Let it come out of my friends. Let it come out in my business. God, only you can do it by your spirit. Holy Spirit. Power me, God. Just seek that again. Say, Oh, I feel the power of God coming. Overflow me, God. Take over my doubt. Take over my fear. Take over the pain. Take over the habit. We need you, God. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. myself away that's what we're doing when we surrender I give myself away so you can come on somebody's inviting the Holy Spirit in welcome Holy Spirit come in change my habits change my heart we need you come Sing the next part. My life is not my own. To you I belong. This is what you're doing today. I give myself, I give myself to you. Holy Spirit, come in. My life is not my own. Take over. To you I belong. So I give myself. I give myself, I give myself to you. Just one more time. The Holy Spirit's moving right now. My life, my life is not my own. To you, to you I belong. So I give myself, I give myself whatever you want to do, Holy Spirit. Show me, show me where I'm wrong. Show me, lead me into all truth, God. My life is not my own. Have your way. To you I belong. So I give myself, I give myself, I give myself to you. So Holy Spirit. You're welcome, Holy Spirit. You are welcome. New 
meaning. Fresh new months. Fresh wind of God. Fresh revelation over your life. Fresh spirit of God. Do what only you can do, God. Real soft, sing the next part. Because this is what's going to happen. Let us become more aware of your you're gonna, Your senses, you're going to hear them. You're going to see them. You're going to be directed and redirected. Let us become more aware Holy Spirit, come in. Do what only you can do, God. Let us I feel a revival raising up. 900 people have already signed up to be baptized. That wasn't even nine minutes. In nine minutes, 900, a revolution. Come in, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. In nine minutes, 900 people. What's gonna happen in the next seven days, Malia? Dale, what's gonna happen in the next seven days? But oh, I forgot. Holy Spirit already told us what the year was called. He said this year we would be anchored. If you wanna be anchored, and you need to receive salvation, I am so hyped right now, I'm about to do a backflip, and I can't do one of those. If you need to walk through the first door of getting an anchor for your soul, I believe that today is your day of salvation. You can get baptized into salvation. The Holy Spirit's been drawing you all your life and all service. Today is the day of salvation. If you want to get saved on the count of three, I just want you to lift your hands. I don't care who's around you. I don't care what you did yesterday, and I don't care what you plan to do after this service. Right now, the Holy Spirit has interrupted and invaded and convicted you or convinced you that you are a sinner and you need a savior. And today, I want you to make the greatest decision of your life. It's the thing that took me from being a liar, addicted to pornography, a manipulator, somebody who had so much evil and bad things in their heart. And he didn't make me a perfect man, but we've been on this progression journey and I'm a progressing man. And today, God wants to give you that one, this would be the greatest decision you ever made over finances and family and everything. Two, I'm so proud of you, but more than that, your name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life and your eternity will be secure forever. Three, if you want to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, lift your hand all over the world. Come on, lift it in the chat. There are hundreds, if not thousands of people. And if you're watching this on rebroadcast, you can have that same decision right now. Now, Transformation Church, you know how we do. We're about to pray. And we all pray together for the benefit of those who are coming to Christ. And so right now, would you just do one more time just to lift your hands. This is the international sign of surrender. <laughs> this is what you have to do. The Holy Spirit saying, freeze! And your hands go up and say, I'm not holding anything else. I'm not holding on to it anymore. I'm giving it to you. Everybody say, God, thank you for sending Jesus just for me. Today, I am convinced that I need a savior and I choose you Jesus come into my life and remake me I believe you lived you died and you rose again just for me today I give you control change me renew me transform me I'm yours in Jesus name Amen. Can we rejoice with heaven? Oh, heaven is turning up and throwing a party right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, y'all too, y'all too excited about just the baptism. They're in heaven now. If you just got saved, so happy for you. Everything's about to transform in your life. Would you text SAVE to the number on the screen?
And we're going to send you some information because we're committed to walking with you. Already 29,000 people have given their life to Christ. And now we're going to go over 30,000 people giving their life to Christ. Do you know what that means? We just robbed hell again. We just robbed hell again. But could I admonish you, encourage you? Don't stop at step one. You just got baptized into salvation. After you text the number, go ahead and text baptism to the same number. And join us on Flood Sunday. And roll the tape back. And, and just ask. And this is for everybody. All week, just keep asking the same question. Holy Spirit, fill me up. And I'm telling you, it may not, look, I don't feel anything. Remember, it's by faith. Everybody say by faith. By faith. You don't want me to confirm that you've been filled with the Holy Spirit. There will be a knowing on the inside of you. And next week, I'm going to teach you how you surely know that you've been filled with the benefits and the evidence. I'm about to break this thing down so nasty. I already got it. But if you feel like God filled me up, and if you've been filled before, ask him, fill me up again. Bree, I don't know how many times I asked the Holy Spirit, fill me again. Give me a fresh wind. Blow the pneuma into my life. Blow the pneuma, the Spirit of God, into my marriage. Blow the pneuma into my thought life. Transformation Church, can I tell you how much of a pleasure it is to lead a growing church? I'm not talking about in numbers. I'm talking about in maturity. There are many places I couldn't get up and teach this for an hour and 30 minutes and people stay engaged. But Transformation Church, they're going to speak of us one day and say, these are they who went out with power. That's the only reason we talk about the disciples today is because they waited to be endued with power. And they went out and turned the whole world upside down. Transformation Nation, welcome to our new lives of being empowered by the Holy Spirit. I love you, and I believe this week is going to be the best week of your life. Go out and live a transformed life. Let's give God some praise. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you've made the decision to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I want you to know you have made the best decision you could ever make. And if you haven't already, we want you to text the word SAVED to 828282. And if you're international, be sure to go to transformchurch.us. We want to celebrate with you and we want to give you the resources that you will need on your next steps in this journey. If this message has impacted you in any way, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications so that you know every single time that we post. Also, be sure to watch our live full experience every Sunday morning at 1045 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now go out and live a transformed life.